Hey there, this is Natalie, and here we are at the final part of Old Dragon's Tale. I actually always record these intros after recording the chapters, so I've just finished reading it, and I'm kind of sad that it's over. It's been really nice reading it for everyone. I hope you enjoy the final part, which is chapters 21, 22, and 23. I'm going to have a video about Laplace coming up in the next few days that will go into what happens to him after this, to cause the change from the lovely Laplace we got to know in this story to the feared demon god Laplace that Perugius has sworn to kill in Mashoku Tensei, so look out for that if you want to know more about him. If you've enjoyed these readings, I am planning to start doing live readings of other side content from Mashoku Tensei and other series like ReZero as streams on YouTube, and those will be starting later this week. So make sure you're subscribed to be notified when those are happening, or to re-watch the readings back if you can't make it for the live broadcasts. And with that out of the way, for the final time, let's get straight back into Old Dragon's Tale. Chapter 21 Five Dragon Generals Betrayal Five Dragon Generals Betrayal That battle seems to be recorded as such in the history books. Well, it's mostly right. Even though it was a battle for the sake of Dragon God Summer, it was still a betrayal. Without doubt, it was betrayal. However, there was one big mistake. Specifically, only four Dragon Generals participated because I didn't fight in it. Someone needed to clean up afterwards. When Dragon God Sama and the five Dragon Generals fight, some among us would die. Perhaps all of us. That would decapitate Dragon World's entire leadership. Who would lead the Dragon Warriors, kill the demonic beasts, research the arts, or assist Dragon God Sama then? Thus, I was asked to stand down. A vital but shameful role. Why would I feel ashamed? You don't know. The five Dragon Generals disobeyed Dragon God Sama's orders. The only punishment for that was our destruction, until not even a claw or fang remained. Leaving aside whether we succeed in preventing Dragon God Sama from invading the human world, our betrayal was an undeniable fact. Even if everyone survived, punishment would be unavoidable. Only death could make up for it. Yet, I alone escaped responsibility. Even though I didn't participate in the fight, I already disobeyed and plotted against Dragon God Summer. Yet, I alone would keep my position among the Dragon Generals. Nothing was more shameful than this. Even for the future of Dragon World, it was an inexcusable act. But as the most junior member, I accepted my role. By the way, we didn't begin the fight immediately. Dragon God Sama and the Five Dragon Generals. If we fought, we could easily have wiped out a mountain or two. Preparations must be made for the battle. Stop Dragon God Sama. Easier said than done. A few punches and kicks, restrain and lock him up somewhere. Do you think it would be that easy? The power required to resist Dragon God Sama would wipe mountains off the map. Of course, no structure could lock Dragon God Summer in place outside of an appropriately large magic circle. It's like babies challenging an adult. You may not have interacted with babies much, but even when sick or injured, it's hard to lose to a baby that could barely crawl. There was such a power gap between Dragon God Summer and the Dragon Generals. That's why four Dragon Generals worked together to confront Dragon God Summer seriously. The same tactic that defeated the Demon Kings. No, even more power was needed. Preparations took a fair bit of time. Dragon God Sama agreed to wait. You may think it's strange. Perhaps Dragon God Sama wanted to give the five Dragon Generals a chance to hand over responsibilities and evacuate the Dragon Race. Whatever the reason, he waited. Maybe Dragon God Sama couldn't win by himself in Human World, or perhaps he was waiting for Dragon Generals to reconsider after a while. I don't know. While the other Dragon Generals prepped, I was by Dragon God Sama's side, helping him evacuate the population of Chaos to elsewhere. I didn't know where exactly the fight would take place either, but Chaos was the centre of our world. The possibility for collateral damage was high. 
I spent the days leading the evacuation effort. Everyone was troubled. Nobody would believe that four of the five dragon generals would revolt against Dragon God Sama. Some people even said they wanted to stand and fight with Dragon God Sama. But Dragon God quieted those voices and stopped them. Ordinary Dragon Race wouldn't have had a chance in a fight between Dragon God Sama and the five dragon generals. Dragon God Sama must have wanted to avoid any unnecessary casualties. After the evacuation was complete, I went back to Dragon God Sama. As well as showing my continued loyalty, it was also a quiet check to prevent him from abruptly taking off to human world. He remained silent in his thoughts. Dragon God Sama didn't talk with me, nor act in any way dangerous, only quietly pondering about something. At any moment, it felt like he would ignore me and abruptly head towards the human world. I could only imagine what he thought about at that moment. But Dragon God Sama was wise. Perhaps at that moment, he already peered through the fog to understand the mastermind and his true motives. Or perhaps he already predicted the worst case scenario. Anyways, the day had finally come. I received the word from the Dragon Generals that the preparations were complete. Upon receiving the news, Dragon God Sama looked at me. What are you going to do? I will fight alongside Dragon God Sama. I felt the weight of duty, inheriting the will of five Dragon Generals, not leaving Dragon God Sama alone. As the last of the five Dragon Generals, I shall carry on their legacies. Dragon God Sama stared at me for a while, then slowly shook his head. I won't allow you to fight. My first reaction was to protest and ask why I must stand by. Just in case, go and protect my son. Instead, Dragon God Sama gave me such an important task, protecting the son of Dragon God. Dragon God Sama must have thought that even the strongest dragon warriors could not protect him right now. If you think about it, perhaps Dragon God Sama feared that even his child may become a target while he was preoccupied. Don't let any harm come to him. Yes. Back then I didn't realise how important of a mission protecting the child was. I thought of him as Lunaria's legacy, being entrusted by Dragon God Sama, what he treasured most in the world. That's what I was protecting, I thought. Thus I rode Saliact and evacuated far away with the child. Soon after, Chaos disappeared. Long-range bombardment from Maxwell's Dragon Gate artillery wiped Chaos from the map. Beams of light sped through the air and landed on Chaos. They all struck at the same time and formed a ball of light. And just like that, an entire mountain was erased from existence. The highest peak in Dragon World, the most historic city. I was shocked. I wasn't sure how the five Dragon Generals would fight. I never thought such a historic and well-defended city would be so wantonly destroyed. I really thought for a moment that the Dragon Generals had truly betrayed Dragon God Sama. But with a little thought, I understood their thought process. It goes without saying that the five Dragon Generals did not intend to kill Dragon God Sama. They simply wanted to stop him, force Dragon God Sama to remain in Dragon World instead of leaving for Human World. If Chaos was destroyed, it needed to be rebuilt. A great deal of effort and time to return our people back to their regular lives. If this reminded Dragon God Sama that Dragon World must be prioritised over the human world, then regardless of the outcome of the battle, it's a victory for the Five Dragon Generals. Perhaps a bit of trickery. But the Five Dragon Generals were already prepared in case of failure. The fight would be futile if after defeating them, Dragon God Sama went to the human world anyway. When the debris and smoke cleared from Chaos's destruction, only a single existence remained. Dragon God Sama. He was wholly unscathed. It was too far to see his expression, but he's clearly looking toward the source of the light. Beyond the light of sight, something huge emerged from the clouds. A giant mass of rock covered in dragon scales. Its surface was covered in purple wires attached to iron stakes. A floating rocky mass, common in the heaven world. A nucleus of concentrated magic energy, its movement powered by layers of magic circles. It's covered in dragon scales and outfitted with magic turrets of demonic origin. A full-fledged fortress. 
its name. It didn't have a name. Ah, if I should give it a name, Chaos Breaker, I would call it that. Because that scene and that moment of Chaos's destruction was forever seared into my eyelids. Next, four large beings, as well as 44 small beings, were on board the fortress. The four rebellious dragon generals and the familiars they summoned. Spirit summoning developed during the war with the demons. Dragon race was reputed to be powerful, but not known for delicate or versatile works. Spirit summoning was a technique to overcome that weakness. These were created to counter Dragon God Summer, each with unique abilities, more powerful than those used during the war. When they identified Dragon God Summer, they flew around the fortress in formation. However, Dragon God Summer already made his move before they're fully deployed. Slowly raising his hand, he pointed a fingertip toward the fortress. At that moment, something invisible emitted from his fingertip and flew towards the fortress, an overwhelming torrent of power. Even a dragon general would be in serious trouble if they got caught in it. But before it arrived on target, the fortress distorted. A huge field of distortion. That torrent of power was deflected by the field into a distant mountain, erasing it. The combined forces of 44 spirits blocked Dragon God Summer's attack. Dragon God Summer fired off one torrent after another, however the spirits' distortion fields parried each of them. Didn't you think it was too easy a way to counter Dragon God Summer? I thought so too. No matter how weakened by his previous battles with the other gods, 44 spirits shouldn't be able to prevent his attacks. But that stalemate didn't last. As the fortress approached, the light of the spirits began to diminish. Just a step short. No, it's not fair to call it a misstep. Anyway, by the time the fortress made contact with Dragon God Sama, the spirits lost their power and disappeared, one after the other. The distortion field disappeared as well, leaving the fortress exposed. Even though it was vulnerable, it was still covered in hard dragon scales. Slowly, Dragon God Sama pulled a sword from his waist a sword forged by the Five Dragon General, Mad Dragon Chaos. A genuine God's sword that could withstand the power of Dragon God Summer. Dragon God Summer stood posed with the sword. A cut. I'd witnessed the power of gods many times, but it was always against other gods. Other gods were always capable of withstanding those strikes, but this slash from Dragon God Summer seemed to distort the world. Everything felt out of place. In fact, everything was carved in halves. The sky, the cloud, the dragons flying off in the distance, the ever-approaching fortress, all sliced in two. What are dragon scales against a god? What's the point of the defences on a wooden stump? The huge fortress was split in half. The upper half losing power fell toward the sky. Its lower half remained floating. Its core probably survived the attack. The dragon generals landed on the falling masses, then quickly took off. Their appearances were very different from what I remembered. Their physiques were about three times larger than they should be, so thickly covered in scales that even their face was tightly covered, their nose and mouth sticking out, with horns grew from the back of the head, looking almost dragon-like. The demons had developed a mysterious technique to transform the body with magic. Dragon race evolved it further transforming the body to a more primitive form and gaining an explosive amount of power. In exchange, the user's lifespan was greatly diminished. The transformed four also carried unfamiliar weapons as well. A spear. The dragon generals were all armed with god spears created by chaos. Normally, dragon generals do not use weapons, but not when the opponent was dragon god Summer himself. Without a weapon, you can't even scratch him. The four flew with tremendous speed, dancing around Dragon God Summer. They probably intended for close combat all along. Both the fortress and spirits were made to counter Dragon God Summer's long-range attacks. Physical strength raised with arcane techniques, attacks strengthened by God Spear, as well as all the techniques devised in the Demon War to weaken Dragon God Summer. Concentrating all the wisdom and knowledge of the Dragon Generals in order to hurt their god. The Dragon Generals launched a terrible onslaught. 
Every attack, shockwaves rang, lights flared, and the whole of Dragonworld trembled. Each subtle move, a shockwave ran, a flash of light burst, and the whole of Dragonworld trembled. Its collateral damage destroyed mountains, killed entire flocks of dragons. Even tens of thousands of dragon race got caught up in it. The dragon generals gained the power to hurt God. But only the possibility. Because even with that power, it wasn't enough to overwhelm Dragon God Summer. One on one, it wouldn't be a fight at all. But with all four of them, they barely made a match. Barely. Just barely. Even though they're inferior, the power of the five dragon generals managed to reach Dragon God Summer. The power to reach God. Even if it's just barely, they arrived. They proved that the efforts of man could even reach the gods. That proof was why I... No, let's put that aside. In any case, Dragon God Summer and the Dragon Generals battled for a long time. The Dragon God who was near death and full of wounds, and the Dragon Generals who finally reached the realm of gods. The battle between those five continued ceaselessly. I was always watching. I thought it was my duty to witness it. The battle continues for days. Maybe it wasn't for that long. A fight between gods could last for years. Only a few days. Yes, six days. The Dragon Generals probably intended for the battle to be decided quickly. Probably. No matter how much they prepared, how much their powers had developed, if it became a war of endurance, they had no chance of victory. So they wanted it to be decided quickly. Maximum offensive for that one in 10,000 shot at victory. One shot out of 10,000. Unfortunately, this wasn't that shot. The seventh day, the light and shock of the battle subsided. The battle was decided on the fortress that was carved into two. I approached the fortress to witness the outcome of battle, and I witnessed a dreadful sight. Four men and women collapsed on the ground. It goes without saying that they were the Dragon Generals. They were all on the edge of death. Sillard lost his left arm, half of his face was burned. Chaos without an eye and a large hole in his belly. Maxwell's claws were all smashed, his wings torn, on his knees. Dora Summer had it the worst. Her right arm and lower body were both gone. She's barely clinging on. A complete victory for Dragon God Summer. But there was something strange. There was an extra arm growing from Dragon God Summer's chest. Sillard or Dora Summer's lost arm? No. There were no scales on that arm. A flesh-coloured, featureless arm, surrounded by fog, difficult to recognise. Everyone, including Dragon God Summer, was looking at the arm, stunned. To be precise, the owner of that arm. Behind him, the god that struck landed a deadly blow against Dragon God Summer. Human God. Human God had punched through Dragon God Summer's chest, grabbing his divine jewel. Chapter 22 Dragon World's End. I wondered why. How could it be possible? I thought Human God was always on our side until that very moment. Or should I say, even then? Human God Summer, why? I quietly muttered, my mind in turmoil a whirlwind of emotions. Maybe because Dragon God Summer was about to invade the human world, so Human God Summer saw him as an enemy? That said, even if, he'd always been our ally. He advised and helped us. He even assisted us to avenge Lunaria Summer's death. Human God always busied himself for the sake of the worlds. Human God turned to me then, wearing a nasty, hateful grin. Ah yes. <laughs> this. I believed that Human God was going to make up something plausible, initially, something appropriate for his station that won't break character, but he couldn't resist the laughter. He took too much pleasure from the situation. His whole plot went so well that he couldn't help but ridicule us. A disgusting laughter. It sticks to your ears and never fades. No, everyone did a great job. Thanks to you guys, I was able to fulfill my goal. To us who were still stunned, Human God said. The one and only time I heard the truth from him. After that, 
I met others deceived by him and subsequently led to their ruins. Apparently, he took great joy in sharing the plot in such situations, telling you well done and patting you on the shoulder. Thank you. What are you talking about? I asked like an idiot. If I just thought about it a little, I would have realized the truth in Dragon God Summer's words. What else? The war between the gods and the destruction of the worlds. Yes, he was the mastermind. Everything was his work. The breakdown of relationships, the murder of Lunaria Sama and other dignitaries of the worlds, perhaps even the teleportation and magic beast incidents. No, those were probably incidental, but he surely took advantage of them too. Indeed, I merely planted the seeds bit by bit because Dragon God was naturally prudent. I never expected it to work this well. Especially Sillard. You sure did work hard. You never doubted a word I said, just as I expected. Sillard's eyes widened, his body trembling. Without your efforts, Dragon World would never have destroyed the other worlds. I just needed to say three magic words for Dragon God, and you conveniently believed my every word. To think you loyal dogs would go so far as to help me strip Dragon God of his fangs. Preposterous! You said that you wanted to help stop Dragon God Sama. Ha 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 ha! Human God laughed. Indeed, wasn't my act splendid? The best I could hope for was for Dragon God to invade Human World by his lonesome. But... <laughs> he laughed even more joyously, amused by Sillard in his state. Thanks to your effort, Dragon God showed a critical flaw. I was able to kill that most troublesome Dragon God completely unscathed. Preparing for such a large-scale assault on your own master? How moronic. What were you guys thinking? I merely fanned the flame a little, and you went this far. You're killing me with laughter with your so-called loyalty. Oh, Dragon God, I pity you for having such loyal vassals. Now that he mentioned it, Sillard's behaviour had been strange. It was a little unusual for Sillard to be the first to advocate for war. It was also Sillard who first suggested to stop Dragon God Sama. A long time ago, it was Sillard who killed the Demon King without a direct command from Dragon God Sama. Sillard, the most resolute of the five dragon generals, he was deceived. Dancing to Human God's tunes, he instigated the war between the worlds and drove Dragon God Sama to death's door. Sillard screamed by this realization. Dragon God Sama! With his remaining arm, he cut off both his legs, plucked out what remained of his fangs and gouged out his eyes. And finally, thrust a fist into his chest and pulled out his heart. Forgive me! Then he held it up and squeezed. With a pop, his heart burst and Sillard's arm fell limply onto the ground. Sillard followed Crystal, the second Dragon General to die. The Dragon General with green silver scales and ephemeral eyes, who won fame fighting against the demon race and christened the Holy Dragon Emperor. To atone for his sins, he ended his life with his own hands. As his last act of loyalty, having been deceived by the enemy and driven Dragon God Sama to his death, he had no other way to atone. Oh, how miserable and stupid to choose suicide because you've been fooled. Yet, human god mocked that loyalty. Just remembering it makes me seethe. Ah, oh, how he laughed at the loyalty of Sillard to Dragon God Summer, the pride of the five dragon generals. But we couldn't say anything. Certainly we were stupid, miserable fools. Deceived by human god lies and Sillard's words, we drove Dragon God Summer to his death. The reality was too stark, too heavy to bear. I was filled with frustration, yet unable to refute anything. Don't laugh. Hmm? It wasn't a Dragon General that stopped Human God's laughter. Sillard was a loyal vassal. Do not laugh at him. Oh, you're still alive? Lizards sure are tough, huh? It was Dragon God Summer. Even with the divine jewels scooped from his body, he somehow clinged on. How exactly do you plan to order me around in this situation? Sillard's judgment was correct, and I would have done the same in his situation. Everything was my fault. Don't laugh at Sillard, laugh at me. 
What are you talking about? I've been laughing at you the whole time. Dragon God swelled with murderous intent. Even near death, Dragon God Sama still had an overwhelmingly intimidating presence. His anger had peaked. In response, a cold sweat dropped from Human God's forehead. Human God, no. The thing in the shape of Human God, answer this. You are in no position to ask me questions. Who are you? Why did you want war? Why did you want to kill the gods? And why did you kill Lunaria? Those weren't mere questions. Those were demands. The five dragon generals would have immediately stood straight and vomited out everything we knew. Those were orders. But human god did not answer. No intent to obey. Instead, he squeezed Dragon God Summer's divine jewel tightly, and with a loud snap, the jewel shattered. Ugh. The next moment, Dragon God Summer spit a large amount of blood from his mouth. Every time he defeated a god, he also took out their divine jewel. It had the power to cross between worlds, but also the source of a god's divine power. Still acting so high and mighty? What a joke. You lost. You lost to me. Human God shouted and tramped on Dragon God Sama on the ground, over and over again. Why kill Lunaria? Why the war? You! It was all to kill you! More powerful than anyone, yet wary of war. So cautious and without flaws. Ha! You're in this state now, all because of me! There was no power left in Dragon God Sama's body, but his breath had yet to fade. Rather, that feeling of intimidation only increased. What the hell are you? Damn it! Even Human God felt intimidated. The collapsed, dying Dragon God Summer still intimidated Human God, feeling the brunt of anger and murderous intent. Losing his most beloved, tricked into fighting other gods, even having his own vassals turned against him, all of Dragon God's wrath now focused on Human God. Ha! Huh, it's useless to glare. You're already dead. I'm the one and only god. With that said, human god stepped away and floated into the sky, with an arm raised, palm pointing facing upwards. A force converged on that palm, forming a tremendous ball of light. Destruction! Dragon world! There was no time to stop him. No, even if there was, it couldn't be stopped. The ball of light fired off from human god's hand. It flew high above, as if to absorb all of Dragon World. Explosions, lights, and shockwaves blasted the land. By the time the light subsided, the world had begun to collapse. The earth began to crack and darkness creeped into the sky. It was a little different from previous ones, but still a scene I'd witnessed many times. A scene of a world's end. Ha! Goodbye, Dragon God. May you perish here. Human God slowly flew away, mockingly. I could just watch. If I had another chance, I would have attacked. I couldn't forgive the violence of tramping on Dragon God Summer. I couldn't forgive the insolence of insulting the five dragon generals, but I was too shocked to do anything. Me, Chaos, Maxwell. What did we do? What just happened? Of the five dragon generals, only the recently deceased Sillard fully grasped the situation only that something terrible and irreconcilable had happened, we knew. The Plas. Dragon God Sama's voice brought me back to reality. Dragon God Sama, I'm here. I staggered my trembling body to Dragon God Sama's side. Dragon God Sama was still alive. His divine jewel crushed, covered in scars and wounds from other gods, and yet he clinged on. Chaos. Maxwell. Dragon God Sama, we're... It's fine. We failed to obey Dragon God Sama's order. Please forgive us. No, it's unforgivable. Only death could atone for our sins. Please order it. I forgive you. Everything happened because I did not explain the situation to you. Dragon God Sama forgave Chaos and Maxwell so easily, even though we betrayed him. But I have one last mission for you. Yes, yes. The end of Dragon World approaches, and we're out of time. I need time to devise a plan to kill Human God. Earn that time for me with your lives. Make some time. I didn't know exactly what that entails. 
I thought about it often, but I never figured out exactly how one can delay the end of the world, but they accepted their final order without hesitation. Yes, Chaos and Maxwell took off flying, circling above Dragon God Summer. Dora, where's Dora? Dragon God Summer called out to Dora Summer, but Dora was in bad shape. She could no longer move on her own. Laplace, yes, without further instructions. I went beside Dora Summer to witness her final moments. Dora Summer, hmm, that voice. Laplace, what happened? I can't see anything anymore. Dora Summer was dying, probably in her last moments of consciousness, but she still struggled to understand. She probably realized something terrible had happened, fading, but she desperately wanted to know. Human God, I explained everything that I saw, that it was all Human God's plot, how he instigated the war, how Sillard took responsibility and committed suicide to atone, that Dragon God Sama was near death at the hands of Human God, and that Dragon World was collapsing. Everything. Well, then I can only make up for it with my life, but I'm already near death, Dora Sama said to me, her hollowed eyes looking upwards. Laplace, I have a request. Please ask anything. It's not an order, but it's a request. It's unavoidable, I'll be judged as a rebel. But my son, Perugis, please help him escape. I beg you. Escape? Where to? To the future. The method in the teleport research lab. Please, Dragon God Sama. I didn't understand the meaning of Dora Summer's words, but I do understand what she means. To leave her be. In the end, Dragon God Summer's words were true, and we were wrong. That's great. Betraying Dragon God Summer was a mistake. That's wonderful. Those were Dora Summer's final words. She was always doubtful. To stop Dragon God Summer by force, she always had her reservations about that. That's why she was relieved in the end, knowing that Dragon God Summer was right. Then she died, the third to die after Sillard. Even more important than her own son, her final thought was loyalty to Dragon God Summer. She was loyal to Dragon God Summer to the last. After bearing witness to Dora Summer, I returned to Dragon God and conveyed her final words to him. After pondering for a bit, Dragon God Sama said, Laplace, carry me to the teleportation laboratory. Yes. I carried Dragon God Sama with one hand and flew. Of course, I carried his son with my other hand. A few minutes of flight while avoiding falling debris, we arrived. The secret location Dora Sama brought me to once before, the teleportation research laboratory. Dragon God Sama, those terrible wounds. The elderly researchers had remained, already near death and already made their peace, there unperturbed by the world collapsing around them. Seeing the gravely injured Dragon God Sama concerned them more. Dragon God did not answer, but simply said, the time has come. Casting their worried expressions aside, they immediately led us to the laboratory's innermost chamber. At the terminus was an altar and a monument, the boundary of the world, an altar that functions as a gate to another world. The stone monument was engraved with sophisticated magic circles. Three divine jewels were placed before the altar. Laplace, place my son here. Following his instructions, I placed Dragon God Sama's son on the altar. After I distanced myself from the altar, Dragon God Sama stood before it. While I wondered what was going to happen, Dragon God Sama began to draw magic circles onto the child. Far too sophisticated for me, but I understood that it was a technique written on the stone monument. Dragon God Sama seemed to understand it just by glancing at it for a few seconds. The collapse of Dragon World cannot be stopped. I will die. We've lost. Dragon God Sama said it plainly, as if merely confirming the facts. Even so, he must be killed. Human God killed Lunaria Sama. He made us dance in the palm of his hands to destroy the other worlds. 
even cause the five dragon generals and dragon god Sama to battle amongst ourselves until our own mutual destruction. Unforgivable. That was not human god. Human god wasn't such a man. Hitagami, let's call him that. I do not know why Hitagami pretended to be human god or where human god has gone, but I'm certain of his machinations to destroy us, that he indeed has divine power. To defeat him, you'll also need God's power. Dragon God Summer stared intently at me. After this, I'll go to Human World and challenge him to one last battle. Not at your current state. I know, my death is unavoidable. I have no chance of winning, but I must have my vengeance. As Dragon God Summer finished, he picked up one of the divine jewels and pushed it into his chest. Blood streamed, but Dragon God Summer's body began to shine. A little power seemed to have returned to that dying body. Yet my revenge would probably end in failure. That's why. Dragon God Summer picked up one of the divine jewels and placed it on the chest of the child. It fell within. My child will reincarnate. The blood of Dragon God Summer and Human God will flow through this child, a demigod with great potential the power of gods. I shall grant to my child every technique, and to him the ability to remain concealed until he could defeat Hitagami, but that will not be enough. He must find out what happened to human god, and how Hitagami obtained divine power in the first place. Until then, defeat is inevitable. Dragon God Summer looked toward me, picked up the final divine jewel, and offered it to me. I give you a mission. Yes. I received it and offered the utmost salute. It was for Dragon God Sama that I learned the utmost salute. It was my final salute to Dragon God Sama. I'll send my child 10,000 years into the future. In the meantime, I want you to find Hitagami's true identity, his whereabouts, his weaknesses. Find a way to defeat him and convey that to my child. Yes. After Dragon God Sama granted me my final mission, he applied various techniques to the child. Complex techniques. I still don't understand what was applied, just that their abilities for countering Human God. At the minimum, Hitagami was similar to Human God. I waited for Dragon God Sama to finish as the world collapsed outside. He continuously embedded magic circles about the child without pause. Dragon God Summer had probably foreseen this ending, that it would end like this. He probably realised what was happening when the Dragon Generals broke away. If you think about it, Dragon God Summer could have just headed to Human World and ignored us. However, Dragon God Summer probably realised he couldn't win, even if he did. Hitagami probably already had traps set for him if he left on his own. That's why he looked for another way. As Dragon Generals made our preparations, he probably was thinking of a way the whole time. Finally, do you have any last questions? Dragon God Sama asked as he finished embedding the last magic circles. Slowly I shook my head, but suddenly I thought of something. A question I had to ask. A name. Name? The name of your child. This was the end. There won't be another chance. This wasn't something for me to decide. It was Lunaria Summer's wish for Dragon God Summer to grant the child a name. Dragon God Summer paused briefly. However, it must have already been decided. Orsted, without any hesitation. The child's name is Orsted, Dragon God Summer pronounced. Just like that, Dragon God Summer's child, Orsted, was sent to the future. Dragon God Summer and I flew out of the collapsing laboratory and headed to the human world. Dragon God Summer went ahead, leaving me behind. Our final words exchanged were, may the fortunes of war be with you, and everything shall be left to fate. That was the last I saw of Dragon God Summer. I jumped onto Saliact, dodging the falling rocky masses, and flew to the altar. While I flew, I sensed a great presence disappearing behind me. Two, it was Chaos and Maxwell. Those two who literally put their lives on the line to resist the collapse had passed. The fourth dragon, Chaos. The last dragon, Maxwell. 
Maybe the order was inverted, but that's how I memorialised them. Thanks to their efforts, I managed to escape from the collapsing dragon world. By the time I arrived at human world, the battle had already begun. Due to the battle between gods, the human world was beset by natural disasters. Tornadoes, hurricanes, tsunamis, earthquakes, thunder and lightning. Fear and loathing swelled around the world. Intimidated by the divine, all living things of the world came to innately fear the dragon race. But more than that, I was shocked. Because human world has transformed. So much so that I no longer recognise it from when I was last here. The human world of old was an endless grassland and streams, but now there are rivers, mountains, oceans, wilderness and deserts, as if all of the six worlds had condensed into one. Perhaps the collapse of each world had caused their magical energy to disperse into the human world. Maybe this unbalanced world, from my view, is what's subjectively balanced. I landed on one of the mountains, straddling Saliact, the highest peak in the world as I bear witness to the end of the battle. I didn't know where exactly Dragon God Sama and Hitagami were fighting. I could only pray for Dragon God Sama's victory. It might be a remote possibility, but I hoped my wish could be answered. Eventually the battle was over. The thunder and tornado subsided. The roaring sound faded. Only the rain continued to fall quietly for seven days and seven nights. On the eighth day, the sky was blue and clear. There was no wind, the sea was calm, there was no longer the presence of any god, neither Dragon God Sama nor Hitagami. However, I knew, Dragon God Sama was no longer there, thus Dragon World was destroyed. Chapter 23, thus toward a new story. That was the end to my story, Laplace said and took a breath. Relaxing his tense shoulders, unclenching his jaw, however his face remained pale and grim. Anger, resentment, impatience did not disappear. Those terrible memories must have been painful to recall. So, what happened after that? Rostelina asked nervously. Hmm? Afterwards? What happened after Master arrived in the human world? What about the survivors? That's quite a few questions, Rostelina. Laplace laughed helplessly and answered, Dragon race has mostly died out. Of course, some managed to escape the dragon world, but because the collapse came more swiftly than the other worlds, comparably few managed to escape. Rostelina was a little relieved, but quickly noticed something. But then, where are all the dragon races? They're all killed. Why? You don't get it. Even though Hitagami was the mastermind behind it all, it was our hands that destroyed the worlds. Hatred, fear, anger of the dragon race permanently scarred the other races. What if the dragon race came for the human world next? Indeed, fear of the dragon generals spread to this world as well. Well, there were a few survivors. Did Laplace help any of them? No, I did not. Why? because I had something I must do. Laplace was given an important task, a request from Dragon God Summer on the verge of death, a mission more important than the survival of the dragon race. After Dragon God Summer's battle, I searched for Hitagami, but I couldn't find him. Perhaps Dragon God Summer, having no chance at victory, somehow struck him a grave blow or sealed him. Do you not think it's possible they destroyed each other? There was a time when I thought that was a possibility, but after a while, Hitagami started to interfere with me indirectly. It's proof that he's alive. As the last surviving Dragon General, Laplace diligently fulfilled his mission in the human world. Search for the missing Hitagami's whereabouts, his true identity, weaknesses, and how to kill them, to hand over to Dragon God's son, Orsted, when he eventually arrives in the future. But what is the true identity of Hitagami? For what purpose did he do those terrible things? Hmm, unfortunately, I haven't figured that out yet. I can guess at his goals, but he remained an enigma. But I have a hypothesis. That is? Laplace answered Rostelina. When I came to the human world, it was a great shock. 
What once was an endless flat plain has become filled with forests, mountains, and trees. Inhabitants of all the worlds live here. It's as if all the six worlds were weaved together, the world you're now familiar with. Moreover, Hitagami said, I'm the one and only God, as he struck the fatal blow to Dragon God Sama. Thus, Laplace came to a conclusion. I think he wants to become the one and only God for the one and only world. So he caused the destruction of each world, absorbed them and killed their gods. The remaining question is, how did Hitagami gain the power of the gods in the first place? Laplace then put his hand on his chin, thought for a moment, peering at Rostelina. I told you before, in the beginning, there was one God, the creator. He died, but no one knew what happened after he died. Dragon God Sama said so, and Lunaria Sama as well. So where do you think the creator died? No idea. I suspect he died in the world of nothingness. World of nothingness? It's an empty space that you pass through when you move between the worlds. The creator died within that center. So one day he found it and took the corpse for himself. Perhaps he used the divine power from that corpse to replace or capture human God, the weakest among them. Ah. Of course, this is mere speculation. It remains unclear to me what his true purpose was. For Laplace, the details of Hitagami's origin are irrelevant. Whether he was human god, or if he had good reasons for murdering dragon god Sama, he researched and theorized, but his purpose remained the same. Kill the one that murdered dragon god Sama and trampled on the pride of the five dragon generals, Hitagami. So where is Hitagami now? Hmm? Of course, he's in the world of nothingness. How can you be so sure? because I'd searched everywhere in the human world. Perhaps Hitagami was sealed in the world of nothingness, or placed within a barrier within the last of Dragon God Sama's power. Or perhaps Hitagami put himself there in fear of Dragon God Sama. Regardless, something great must have happened. Does this mean you can't go find Hitagami as long as the barrier remains? I've already found a way to unlock it, but it requires enormous magical power and a significant amount of preparation. Even if I do it, Hitagami may be released. If I lose then, it'll ruin everything, Laplace said bitterly. Perhaps he wants to break the seal and fight Hitagami. Perhaps he wants to avenge Dragon God Sama's death and the five Dragon Generals' regret, but he never did. He proceeded slowly and steadily one by one completing the elements that guarantee Hitagami's demise. Laplace Sama had it hard, hasn't he? It is painful to remember the old days, but for the sake of guaranteeing a future without Hitagami, it's not so. One day, Orsted Sama will arrive and fight against Hitagami, with everything I've prepared for him. The martial arts, magic, the techniques, weapons, and knowledge I created no, not just Orsted, with the remaining dragon race, with Perugia's Sama, fighting together against Hitagami. My heart pounds just imagining that moment. With a smile, Laplace said, he has been ready. It was tough at first, to start with nothing except the mission to defeat Hitagami, but thousands of years have made progress possible. He worked on many things. He passed Dragon Race's magic and techniques to the fast-growing human race and studied the secret techniques of Dragon God Sama and the Five Dragon Generals. When the human race developed and improved upon his teachings, he learned from them and shared his newfound knowledge. He prepared countermeasures for the side effects of the magic circles used on Orsted. That was not all. In the event that Hitagami's death had adverse effects, he prepared for that as well. For the descendants of the Five Dragon Generals, he'd hidden in various corners of the world treasures made from fragments of Dragon God Sama's divine jewel and records of his research results in ruins all over the world, doing everything he can, not just now, but for the long term, preparing for every hypothetical. It was no longer so painful because the darkness had passed and the future is bright. But Rostalina could feel it, a sense of distance. Laplace's war. There's no place for her there between Hitagami and the dragon race. 
it made Rostelina very sad. Laplace Summer, what is it? Is there anything I can do? Laplace was taken aback by Rostelina's words, but soon, with a soft smile, he stroked her head. You're always helping me, with cleaning and washing. Not only that, your presence soothes my heart, that's been lonely since I came here to the human world. It's fine as long as you're here. It was just a whim when Laplace picked her up. Of course, there was also the possibility that something useful may come of it. An enormous magical power lay dormant in her body that's hard to come by. However, he didn't plan on using her. Laplace is a person too. After living together for so long, feelings have developed. She's the only one who could heal Laplace now. I don't like that. I also want to help Laplace. I don't think we can fight together, but isn't there anything? Something that will benefit that child in the future? Laplace never asked Rostelina for anything. He hasn't thus far, just to wait for him to return. Surely she could do more than simply soothe his heart. Waiting can be hard as well. Hmm. Laplace knew firsthand how hard waiting can be. He'd been waiting for a long time for Orsted, son of Dragon God Summer. As preparation dwindled, when there's nothing else left to do but wait, he might have found himself a little restless as well. Hmm, I understand. If you insist, I'll have your help, thus Laplace said. Is there anything I can do? Oh, but it may be painful for you. What is it? I'll do anything. I'll need to remove those magic circles I placed on you and restore the curse in your body. Rostelina's face turned a little pale, hearing that her curse would return, plunge back into the darkness she once bore. There was an instinctual fear against that. Then I'll use the demon's arcane technology to gradually reshape your body, so that you can become a store of enormous magic powers that can be passed on to others. Others? Yes. Orsted Summer was vested with a number of abilities to defeat Hitagami, so his magic power would deplete as a result. If the magic consumption is higher than we anticipated, it may exceed Orsted Summer's ability to recover. Ah, so my magic power could be useful there. That's right. It'll take a long time for the arcane technique to change your body to an ideal state. Maybe a century or two. You won't be able to live like you used to. If everything can be done in my sleep, I think I'll be okay. The changes to your body would affect your mind in a variety of ways too. With the passage of time, it'll even obscure your memories. You mean my personality? Even my memories of Master might be lost? Yes, of course, as long as I make periodic adjustments, your memories can be maintained. Then I'll entrust myself to Master. So you'll bear it? Yes. Rostelina's response left Laplace a little grim, realizing their current lifestyle was over. Her voice would disappear from the household. Rostelina, whose presence was a reminder of that warm household back in Dragonworld, would disappear. A sense of melancholy. However, Rostelina chose for Laplace's sake, for Dragon God Summer's sake. Laplace could not refuse because Laplace was a dragon general. He could not refuse someone who wished to work for Dragon God Summer. Well then, come, let's get ready, Laplace said, forcing a smile on his face. An underground cave in the depths of Dragon's Royal Mountain, a place Laplace uses as one of the laboratories. In it were many giant magic circles constructed of stone. The entire cave was a giant magic tool. In its depths, there was a girl. Her body dipped in waters with a faint shine, her eyes closed asleep. Then the saint overthrew the demon king and returned to his beloved. Laplace was sitting in front of her and speaking quietly, a story from long ago, a heroic tale of the human world. Well, that's it for today. When the story was over, Laplace slowly stood up. I'm heading into battle again. You can't tell what Hitagami is thinking, but nothing good could come of it. I must go now, Laplace said, placing a hand over Rostelina, then slowly covering her sleeping pedestal with a transparent lid. 
Laplace patted the lid as it became completely submerged with shining water. Let's consider the story once I'm done. No worries, because no story is as miserable as those of Dragon Worlds. Laplace said so and turned on his heels. I'm going now. Take care. His footsteps fade with each step. When Laplace left, the lights in the room began to fade. Eventually, the footsteps disappeared and the room was engulfed in darkness. Rostelina was unconscious, but Laplace's story surely reached her, deep within her consciousness. She would wait, waiting for the day when the arcane adjustments end and she can help Laplace. In the darkness, waiting, always waiting. The end. <laughs>